I have a TARD story that actually happened to me, and it's first person because, well, I'm a TARD. Be me. A hearty tardy. Outdoor pool is closed, so I go to the Queen of Dairy. My special swimming group takes me inside with Joe Tard and the Lukes. I run up to the cashier and I pay with my Dubit card. I got a brownie dough blizzard. I order Chippo soon after. I grab a napkin and squirt ketchup and musty all over the napkin. Dip a Chippo into it. Eat the fry. Miss Wrangler gets angry and says, D, what are you doing? I don't respond. I keep eating the Chippo. Mr. Wrangler is driving to the restaurant. I go to pick up Luke Tard. Start pinching his nose. Luke Tard starts to say, Ay, ay, ay. Take his sunglasses, run outside, and start doing a tarded dance in the drive thru. Reeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
foreshadowing. Tard brings Lizard to class to show from time to time. One day, Tard leaves lid open on Lizard Cage. It was on a Friday. Monday morning, Tards come in to find lizards infested throughout the school. They had no water, though, so they all died. The Tard screeches I heard shall forever remind me of that hilarious day. Tard Kid makes this tarded crying noise, laughing my ass off. JPEG. After that, people kind of got sick of him being an immature Tard, so he is overall ignored now. He occasionally gets in trouble for not doing any work and being a lazy Tard. But other than that, he still talks about dragons. Be me, 14-year-old middle schooler at the time, 2014, on a super long bus route to and from school. For some reason, I was the first one on and last one off. I was on the bus for three hours daily. The guy that got on right after me in the morning and right before me in the afternoon was a downy. Let's call him Matt. Always wore his headphones, listens to country music. Good older shit like Willie, David Allen Coe, Merle Haggard, Hank Williams. One day, Matt forgets his headphones, just plays music on his phone. I listen with him as we are decent friends. Willie Nelson's Angels Flying Too Close to the Ground. Good shit. Song ends. If you don't know, David Allen Coe is white, from the Deep South, and a horrible racist. His songs reflect such. His song, Nigger Fucker, comes on. The term nigger doesn't come till a good half minute in. None of the black kids on my bus know the song and think it's fine for the first verse. It arrives. Hell breaks loose. I'm sitting by the window, Matt's next to me, towards the walkway down the middle of the bus. Black kids charge towards us. Punch is thrown. Obviously, Matt can't punch back. Throw myself in between the Tard and the Nignogs, because I can't stand seeing him get beat. Get fucked up just as bad. We're out of school for a week. My nose is broken, so is his. He lost a tooth. I return to the bus. Matt is forced to ride the short bus. Turned out to be a good thing, as the short bus arrives at Matt's house 45 minutes later than my bus arrives on mine. Don't mind the Tards, so I ride his bus. Net gain of 45 minutes of sleep every morning. We played niggerfucker on the bus every morning. Bus drivers didn't give a shit. Good times. Be me, hungry. I go to a nearby McDonald's. While waiting in line, I spot an undercooked tater with his caretaker. He spots me. He smiles at me, drooling on his shirt while doing so. Ah, shit. I smile back. Try my best not to enrage the tard. I get my nuggets and some fries for myself. I walk cautiously around the tard. While doing so, he spotted my nuggets. Idea.jpg. I offered the tard one of my chicken nuggets. Tard has a suspicious look on his face, but he still accepts it. Caretaker is probably completely oblivious to this. That or she doesn't give a shit about the tard. Tard is now happy, and he recognizes me as one of his friends. Thank you, mister, he says while jumping around sporadically. I leave satisfied, knowing that I have made peace with the Tard. Shit on this story all you want. I'm just happy I made a new friend that day. Okay, so long story short, I was admitted to a mental hospital when I was 16. It wasn't my only time in a mental hospital, so I have a lot of stories like this, but this one is the most interesting in my opinion. So I was in the hospital for about four days, and things had gone by pretty normal as far as mental hospitals could go until one morning when the nurse introduced the newest patient. She was tall, overweight, and had that squished up bulldog face most tards are known for. We'll call her Chucky, since that was what she insisted on being called. We started morning therapy with Chucky, and she started off by sitting in the circle of chairs heavily breathing and staring off with her blank cow eyes. It was her turn to speak when she uttered her first words. I live for Chucky. We all assumed Chucky was like her brother or her friend or something, but when the therapist asked her to elaborate, she explained that she was talking about the fucking doll from Child's Play. Excuse me, what the fuck? She started telling me the story of the first time she saw the movie, 
like she was telling the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Throughout the day, she went on constantly speaking in butchered quotes from the Child's Play movies and refusing to respond to anyone who referred to her by her actual name. You had to call her Chucky. Little did we know that this was only the preamble to the absolute insanity that was Chucky the Tard. There were a couple other patients who could fly off the rail in fits of rage and violence at the slightest provocation. I don't remember exactly what happened, but Chucky decided to flip off on one of those rage patients. All hell broke loose. Rage let loose mouth diarrhea of incomprehensible ghetto speak. I live near Detroit, that's basically their language. Then Chucky let out what would soon be known as her catchphrase. I am Chucky, and I will kill you. Rage paused for a moment in confusion, and then continued belting out ghetto speak. Things were going to get violent, so the Tard Wranglers rushed into the common room. Ghetto Rage was calmed, and Chucky was asked to leave the room. She continued to drone her catchphrase, I am Chucky, and I will kill you. Since this is a mental hospital, threats like that have to be taken seriously, since they could very well be serious. And we were evacuated from the room. Outside the room, I could hear Chucky letting out her rapt hard screams until she was brought out to the quiet room and given a shot. She was eventually brought out and things stayed calm for a while. I was playing cards with a few other patients and Chucky was quietly coloring. It stayed this way for about two hours. Chucky waddled over to me playing cards and stared down at me, breathing down my neck. Both my arms had very deep, very obvious self-harm cuts. Chucky pointed at a very deep cut and said, Chucky could have done that. Not knowing how to respond, I stayed silent and continued playing cards. She stared for a while and then repeated, Chucky could have done that. Once again, I said nothing and Chucky waddled back to her coloring. What. The. Fuck. The day ended with nothing noteworthy happening. The next day came, morning went by, and I guess Chucky decided things were getting too dull, so she mixed things up a bit. At lunch, Chucky took a Rager's yogurt cup. The piece was broken by more fits of ghetto speak and Chucky blankly staring off, holding up a fat middle finger, and once again droning on that catchphrase. I am Chucky and I will kill you. Like last time, the Tard Wranglers escorted her to some sort of lobby area, but she wasn't having it this time. Now the common room we were in had long glass windows and a glass door, so you could see in the lobby. From the lobby I could hear those raptard screams. Paper was flying everywhere as Wranglers struggled to detain her. Chucky started crawling across desks, rolling around the floor, slamming her body against the glass door and windows to the common room, so your typical Tard attack. About six restraints and a shot were needed to subdue her, and once again she got to take a nap in the quiet room. I detail all of her Tard attacks, but they went by pretty much the same. She'd piss someone off, Tard Wranglers would come, if she refused to leave we'd be evacuated, she'd be put in restraints, given a shot, and locked away in the quiet room. She did at one point make threats to kill Ghetto Rage, so Tard Wranglers had to take shifts sitting in her room, watching her sleep. And now I guess her grand finale. It was evening, almost time for closing therapy, and everyone was sort of doing their own thing in the common room. I don't recall what sparked it, but Chucky had managed to piss someone off yet again. Along with her catchphrase, she repeated the words, You nigger! Hard R, mind you. And then Ghetto Rage snapped. Tables were flipped, crayons broken, coloring books ripped to pieces. All hell broke loose. Chucky was about foaming at the mouth and was given multiple hearty punches to the face by Ghetto Rage. A full-on fight broke out in the lobby. Ghetto Rage ended up breaking her hand punching Chucky but was calmed. Chucky on their other hand once again given a shot and put into restraints but this time she wasn't put in the quiet room. She was completely removed from the unit. I asked a nurse what happened and I was told that she was moved to a more secure unit. That was the last time I saw Chucky. Sometimes I wonder what she's up to. Whenever I see adverts for a new child's play movie, I can't help but think of Chucky the Tard.